What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Bar for Life. Today, I'm gonna be showing you some cocktail hacks. Now, these are techniques that can be applied to very many cocktails to just help you add a little bit more complexity and a little bit more depth to your drinks. Maybe a little je ne sais quoi. On this channel, I do a lot of really specific recipes, but I don't do stuff that is, I don't often anyway do stuff that can be applied just really across the board. So the first technique that I'm gonna be showing you is called a Regal Shake, and it was first applied to a daiquiri. It was created by a bartender in 2010 named Theo Lieberman, who was the head bartender of Milk and Honey at the time. And when I show you guys this, you're gonna see that it's so genius and so simple that you're gonna be kicking yourself that you haven't been doing it all along. All right, so let's get into making it. First thing we're gonna do, one ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and two ounces of your preferred rum. I'm using the Probitas white rum. And then for the regal part, we're gonna be taking a swath of grapefruit peel, but you can really do this with any citrus peel you want. You can do it with orange, you can do it with uh, lemon, you can do it with lime, pretty much anything. But we're gonna be doing it with grapefruit. So we're just gonna stick that into our tin along with our ice. I said along with and then put it in the separate tin. But we're gonna be marrying it all in a second anyway. Then we're just gonna add it all together, give it a nice hard shake. You're gonna strain it. Technically, you would have like a little lime wheel on here. I'm just gonna take a sip. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. Oh man, it just explodes in your mouth. So what's really nice about this technique is that you get a little bit of bitterness from the pith and the character of the grapefruit without actually having to add bitters to it. And you're also getting a little bit different of a citrus character without having to add another juice to the cocktail. You have all of those pieces of ice striking the peel and expressing the oils inside the tin. And so you get this burst of grapefruit along with that nice lime juice, but then you also have this bitter finish that really balances out the sweet in this cocktail. So there it is, the Regal Daiquiri. So the next technique that we're gonna be doing is making an air and putting it on top of a cocktail. And we're gonna be making a sea salt air uh, and putting that on top of a margarita, which would be a nice, fun, and unique way of expressing the salt that you would normally put on the rim of your margarita. You're gonna need a couple of specialty items. One of those is sucrose esters. Uh, we have a link below. You can find it on Amazon or modernistpantry.com. And then you are going to need a stick blender or immersion blender. If you don't have one of these, I'm pretty sure you could probably build this in a high speed blender and just do it that way, but I have not actually tried that. So try it at your own risk. And if you do it, let me know about it in the comments. All right, let's make the margarita first. First thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna crush this entire lime in here. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau, ounce and a half of Blanco tequila, and quarter ounce agave. Just add some ice to our tin, add our cocktail, give it a nice shake. Double strain it into our glass. I'm gonna set this aside. For the sea salt air, we're gonna be doing four ounces of water. Two ounces of lime juice. We're gonna get our sucrose esters. We're gonna do a teaspoon and a half. And then a teaspoon and a half of sea salt or kosher salt. Then we take our immersion blender, give it the old blendy poo. And we've made our foam. We just take a spoon and we just spoon it on top of our cocktail like so. And there it is, let's give it a taste. So Dave Arnold always says, and I 100% agree, 
that you should put salt, just like a pinch of salt in any cocktail because it really enhances the flavors. And that's basically what's happening here. Instead of putting salt on the rim, like I said, we, we put a salt foam as opposed to putting it on the rim and it gives it just like a very nice presentation and it is fantastically good. And you get that nice salt and the rest of the cocktail as you sip. So there you have it. Chef Jose Andreas, sea salt. Okay. It's hard with like, uh, like Andreas's. Uh, yeah. So there you have it, Jose Andreas's Jose, <laughs> so there you have it. Chef Jose Andreas is <laughs> margarita with a sea salt air. So the next technique that we're gonna be doing is using a finishing spray or an aromatized spritz over our cocktail. This is a little bit different than using a tincture or a bitter because uh, tinctures and bitters are meant to be put inside your cocktail where these are meant to be sprayed on top of your cocktail as a finish. If we can accept that 85% of your taste comes through your olfactory senses, then this is a really important thing. And I found this company, or this company kind of found me. I actually think this company started showing up in my Instagram feed. It's called uh, Alice and the Magician, and they make finishing sprays. And I was immediately intrigued and wanted to play with them. Now you can absolutely make your own finishing spray is pretty easy to do, but I really like a company that's very forward thinking and doing something very specific and doing it something very well. They gave me two different uh, aromatizing sprays and I'm gonna use them on top of the cocktail that we're making right now. The first one is called Citrus Blossom Harvest and the other one is called Autumn Bonfire. I'm gonna try and use them both. So the cocktail that we're gonna be doing today is called an American Trilogy, which is an old fashioned style that I think is gonna go really well with the aromatics that the company sent me. I think that it is a mix of citrus because when I sprayed it on my hand to test it, it was just so vibrant of a citrus flavor. And usually this cocktail will get an orange twist, but I think this is going to really knock that up and be a good replacement for that. I'm also gonna try this autumn bonfire on here as well because it it smells like burning cedar wood or something or cherry wood or something. It's just really nice and it has this nice smokiness that I think is gonna go really well. All right, let's get into making the cocktail before my ice melts to nothing, huh? All right, first thing we're gonna do is a couple few dashes of orange bitters. I'll be using the Fegans blend. And then I'm gonna do one little cube of brown sugar, Demerara sugar. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little tiny bits of soda water into the cocktail. And then we're just gonna give it a nice muddle. Break up that sugar. We kind of want to retain that sandy quality. It's what I really like. That's what evolves as you drink. You give it a nice mash so that it incorporates mostly. So we're gonna be using Old Forester 100 proof rye. And we got to thank Kevin O'Donnell for this bottle. We got it in our, from our bottle program on our website which you should go and get us a bottle too, because we can use it and shout you out. So that's one ounce of the rye. Then we're doing one ounce of Laird's Bonded Applejack, which is also 100 proof Applejack. And then we're just gonna lower in our rock of ice and stir it. Yeah, just stir till you frost the outside of the glass and the level of the liquid is sort of changed a little bit. This is nicely tempered ice. This is gonna be a little bit more surface water than if you just take it straight out of the freezer. And then we're just gonna finish with our, oh, it smells so good. It's like, I'm telling you, I, I don't know this for sure, but I think it's like a blend of like orange, lemon, lime, maybe grapefruit. Oh, it's so It's so vibrant. So we're just gonna spray that onto our cocktail, one spray. And I am also going to go with this, but I don't want it to be super intense. So I'm gonna spray from back here. Ready? You're gonna get this, Marius? I didn't even get the cocktail. I know. Ready? Yep. You didn't get it in there either. I did. Well, I got the side of the glass. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that is gonna be very smoky. Let's see. All right, let's taste it. Oh, so I get all of that, all of that nice aromatics. I don't know if I went full, too full, full on with uh, these aromatics, but you know, I can taste, I can smell all of the citrus and all of the smoke uh, on this cocktail right now. And it absolutely 100% does inform the flavor of the cocktail. It's so this is just a nice, easy way. Mm. Just adding that extra touch to your cocktails. Just give it that much more. So there it is, the American Trilogy. 
All right, so for the very last technique we're doing today, we're gonna be putting coconut tincture into cocktails. You can use this for very many cocktails from Old Fashions to Manhattans to Sazeracs if you want something that doesn't really seem very obvious. Today we're gonna to be doing a Mai Tai that I wanna show you just because it was respect out by two of our viewers that are very active on our Discord. Uh, their names are Taylor Andrews and uh, Peter Lee. It's just fantastic. They just did one little tweak to the Mai Tai spec that I like to do uh, and it just changed everything. And I think that coconut is gonna go really well. So this coconut tincture I made with 126 proof Everclear and then I took two heaping tablespoons of coconut oil lightly heated it on the stove to liquefy it, threw it into a sealable jar, and then over a course of 24 hours, every now and again, every time I saw it, I would just give it a nice little shake to uh, know, kind of help the infusion. After that's done, uh, as it starts to lower in temperature, it will start to solidify, uh, and then you just put it inside your freezer put for about four hours, and it will completely be solid, and then you just remove the uh, liquid and you have a coconut flavored Everclear. You can use the very high proof Everclear if you want, but I didn't want such an ethanol flavor in each cocktail, so I used the 126 proof. And if you don't have Everclear, can you just use vodka? You can use vodka, yes. I just chose Everclear because it was on my shelf. Uh, you can choose vodka, you could use 80 proof vodka or 100 proof vodka, yeah, up to you. But yes, anything neutral, will it'll work. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just add couple few dashes, I don't know how many, I don't know, a few, into our tin of our coconut tincture. Uh, then we're gonna do one fat half ounce of orgia. Then we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice. So the, the little twist that these guys did on this cocktail is three quarters of an ounce of Amaro Angelino, which is an an orange Amaro. It's very bright, but kind of bitter on the finish as well because it is after all in Amaro, and uh, they replaced uh, the Curacao with this, and it just makes for uh, such this nice bright orange flavor, but it has this bitterness that kind of makes everything combine and it sort of tamps down on some of the sweeter flavors. It's really fantastic. It's a really fantastic hack that I wanted to show you guys. So thank you guys, Taylor Andrews and uh, Peter, for this fantastic, fantastic, fantastic Little twist on a Mai Tai. Sorry, I had to say that so many times. All right, and then we're gonna do one ounce of rum agricole and one ounce of Jamaican rum. I'm using Smith & Cross. And uh, you guys are gonna have to forgive me. I actually ran out of pebble ice, which is what I would normally use in this cocktail. So I'm gonna be using cubed ice and I'm gonna just do just like a straight shake and dump into a large glass at our cocktail. Give it a nice shake. As I said, just gonna give it a nice dump into our glass. I'm actually gonna add a little, little ice to it, even it out. Then we're just gonna add our pineapple fronds, give it a taste. And that is good. Now, I will say this. You do get the coconut in here, even though there's a lot of flavors going on and the Amaro Angelino seems like it would be really powerful, uh, powerful enough to kind of wash out the coconut. I will say that the coconut tincture is better served in something very clean, like a daiquiri or a gimlet. You're gonna really get that coconut, but you still do get it here. So I just really wanted to show you this particular Mai Tai, but I am happy to report that the coconut does come through even with all of these flavors. And as a bonus fifth hack, well, we said it before, but uh, you can freeze your pineapple fronds. Yes, that's exactly what you can do. You can take the, so what we do is we take the really nice looking pineapple fronds that um, are the best looking ones, because sometimes when you buy pineapples, the fronds are a little rough looking, and we put them in a bag and we put them in the freezer and then we use them later and it's really nice. The only thing is that they get a little wilty as they, they, uh, thaw. As they thaw, but they still look pretty all right though. I for, these for, are, these are pretty good looking ones, right? Yeah, and for, for a home cocktail, they're totally passable. Yeah. Well, there it is, guys. The, I guess, Ventura Mai Tai. It's not really my cocktail to name, but those guys didn't tell me what they named it. 
So I'm just gonna call it the Ventura Mai Tai because Mario Angelino is made in Ventura. And then of course the specs are gonna work with Curacao or Cointreau if you wanna use other orange liqueurs or if you don't have Amaro Angelino available to you. But if you are in the California area or it is not too expensive to ship it, I think you should really go out and buy this bottle because it is pretty fantastic, amazing stuff. And I've been using it for the entire life of this channel. I really like it a lot. So uh, they didn't pay me to say that. I just love it. All right, guys, that's it. Yeah, and uh, for the bonus for members, here's when we went to the uh, what, factory, distillery, and saw how they made it. Oh yeah, that's right. We went to this distillery and we shot a whole bunch of footage we never used. So there you have it guys for easy cocktails to help you up your cocktail game and uh, bring it to the next level. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And if you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships and check out our virtual bottle program and t-shirts. And if you want to submit a cocktail, you can do all of that on our website, theeducatedbarfly.com. As always, I'm Leandro from The Educated Barfly and I will see you on another time. Leandro out. <laughs>